welcome to the last lecture of module 5 <clears throat> and uh, of course the last lecture of your course on HEDC systems. Uh, in this lecture I am going to discuss uh, multi-terminal HEDC systems. I'll write here multi-terminal HVDC, it's also called MTDC, in short, MTDC systems. Multi-terminal HVDC systems or what we call as MTDC systems. <clears throat> what is an MTDC system or what is a multi-terminal HVDC system? A multi-terminal HVDC system is an HVDC system with more than two converter stations. So, an <clears throat> MTDC that's multi-terminal HVDC system. An MTDC system is an HVDC system with more than two converter stations. Two converter stations. Let me uh, show it di diagrammatically. Um, first of all, I will show you the classical two terminal HVDC system. This is the diagram, schematic diagram for a classical two terminal HVDC system. In its simplified form. These are converter transformers and these are AC buses. So this is uh, converter 1 which is operating as a rectifier for example. This is converter 2, converter station 2 which is operating in inversion mode of operation. So this is a two terminal HVDC system. I will write a, here two terminal HVDC system. Let me now show you multi-terminal HVDC system using three terminals. It can have more than three terminals. I will show three terminal HVDC system. It looks like this. This is the converter transformer. <clears throat> this is one converter, converting station or converter station. This is another converter station at the other end. Okay, and in the middle you have one more converter station. So you may have one more converter station like this. So here I will write three terms. So we, we have three terminals one, two, and three. So uh, classical HVDC systems are two terminal HVDC systems converter station one, converter station two. Here we have three converter stations one, two, and three. So in this case, this is the diagram for three terminal. HVDC system or what we call as MTDC system, multi-terminal HVDC system. In this case three terminal, it can be more than three terminals. Now um, multi-terminal HVDC system is more complex. Why it is uh, as compared to uh, ordinary two terminal HVDC system, which is also called point to point system. Because the uh, you have added one more uh, converter station in the middle somewhere in the middle so it makes the system more complex so uh, it is i will write here more complex okay its control system is more elaborate control system is more elaborate now in this case you don't have to control two converting stations you have to convert you have to control more than two converting stations therefore the control is complex and you have a, you have to have a elaborate control system right and you need telecommunication requirements are larger you have larger communication requirements between the terminals or between the converting stations for example in two terminal hvdc systems you have to communicate or coordinate the control between only two 
converting stations one and two but in case of multi-terminal hvdc system you have more than two converting stations for example for example in this case you have three converting stations so you have to coordinate the control activities so you have to have elaborate communication systems more elaborate communication channels between all the converting stations okay if you take classical uh, two terminal hvdc point to point hvdc system this converter converting station uh, or uh, one may operate as rectifier and as rectifier it goes for voltage control you know uh, rectifier operates in constant ign ignition angle control which is also called voltage control and converting station two you here you have a converter which is operating in the inversion mode and in the inversion mode it gives current control current control it is this inversion mode whose voltage control maintains the dc line current constant so converter station one which is operating in the rectification mode operates in voltage control mode and converter station two which is operating in inversion state uh, inversion mode it gives the current control okay um, and therefore to coordinate the voltage control of rectifier station and current control of inverter station you need communication channels but here you need more complex and more elaborate communication channels because you may have three or more than three uh, you know converting stations okay uh, so there, that's why i am saying that more te uh, telecommunication channels are required in mtdc system to make proper coordination between various converters st stations now as far as first mtdc system was concerned first multi terminal hvdc system was uh, developed in for continuous operation of Corsica Italy okay it is the expansion of Sardinia Italy system built in 1967 it was built that was built in 1967 and this is the extension of that or expansion of that the third terminal was added at Corsico Italy okay uh, the, uh, earlier you had two terminal HVDC system then the third terminal was also added okay uh, the first large scale M MTDC uh, which was made operational was 2000 megawatt hydrocubic New England transmission built by ABB in 1987 and 1992 okay and um, I am very happy to inform you that the world's first multi-terminal ultra high voltage transmission link is already operational in India. Worlds, I will write here worlds, first ultra high voltage DC transmission link, which is of course a multi-terminal HVDC system. It is also multi-terminal HVDC system, which operates at plus minus 800 kV, very high voltage operation is already operational between Agra and Northeast. I already told you it's in India. This is world's first, you know, in the world there are many, uh, you know, multi-terminal HVDC systems, but this is the first ultra high voltage multi-terminal HVDC system between Agra and Northeast. Okay, since the length between Agra and Northeast is very long, okay, in between uh, you uh, have to create more uh, converting stations for feeding power, for tapping power, for some industrial loads. Otherwise, if you have two terminal HVDC system or very large length, I mean, it's not possible to tap the power uh, on the way in the middle. But using multi-terminal HVDC system, for example, if this length of line is say 2000 kilometer, so uh, you start from here, power starts flowing from here to here over a transmission distance of 2000 kilometer. But in the middle, say after 800 or 900 kilometers, you may have large industrial load. So to feed that large industrial load, you create another converting station in the middle. So that gives rise to multi-terminal HVDC systems. Now let me discuss with you uh, multi-terminal HVDC system network configurations. MTDC network configurations. There are two. Uh, uh, there are two possible schemes 
two possible schemes or configurations two possible schemes of for anti, uh, this uh, multi terminal hvdc systems one is called constant voltage parallel scheme parallel scheme or parallel configuration and the other is constant current series configuration constant current series scheme series scheme i will give you brief introduction to both of them first of all we will go for the configuration of constant voltage parallel scheme constant voltage parallel scheme so it looks uh, now as far as this constant voltage parallel scheme is concerned it may again have two configurations it may be having a radial sorry radial dc network or it may have mesh network mesh network i will draw both uh, simplified schematic diagrams for both let me first of all draw uh, uh, the schematic diagram for constant voltage parallel scheme using radial dc network so it is like this it looks like this let me first of all complete the diagram i will draw the diagram first It is a four terminal HVDC system. It's an MTDC system, but it has four converting stations, four terminal HVDC system, two rectifier stations and two inverter stations. Okay. <clears throat> this is converter transformer. Converter transformer. I'm showing it the simplest possible way. Converter transformer. Similarly, these converters also also fed through converter transformers like this and the midpoints are grounded these midpoints are grounded and this is the converter station 1 or terminal 1 terminal 2 that's converter station station 2 terminal 3 or converter station 3 and terminal 4 converter station 4 so i will uh, write here Mm, it has four first of all let me write here parallel mtdc <coughs> parallel multi-terminal hvdc bipolar scheme bipolar scheme with radial dc network this is called radial dc network this type of dc network parallel it's also called radial dc network so it comprises of four converter stations four converter stations and what are those four converter stations you can see one two three and four one two three four operating in bipolar mode operating in bipolar mode okay so this is the uh, first configuration constant voltage see you know uh, the voltage across each converter station is same constant they are connected in parallel so this is the first scheme of multi-terminal hvdc system this is of course four terminal hvdc system constant voltage parallel scheme uh, with uh, radial dc network as i have seen i have written here radial dc network now i will show constant voltage parallel scheme with mesh network now um, mesh network is like this you can uh, you can see it is like this let me first of all draw then i will explain briefly these are <clears throat> classical HVDC systems but with multi-terminal configurations these two act as rectifiers and then you have inverters inverter inverter stations oh. 
this is inverter station and this is last inverter station <clears throat> the neutrals or middle points or mid junctions are all grounded okay this is converter station one this is two this is three and this is four and these are the converter transformers each converter is fed through a converter transformer which i am showing with the help of simplified diagrams like this <clears throat> okay now the connection is not they are not connected in parallel they are connected in mesh like this they are mesh connected this terminal is connected to this terminal of converter station one is connected to terminal of converter station two like this okay then this terminal is connected to this terminal okay then what is done is that this terminal and this terminal they are connected like this and finally in the middle of this we take another connection to this this is how connections are made <clears throat> okay same is the case with this negative bus like this then like this okay fine then uh, it is like this then from the middle you have a connection like this so this is converter station connection I will write here parallel multi-terminal HVDC system parallel MTDC bipolar scheme bipolar scheme with mesh DC network previous was radial DC network this is mesh DC network okay this type of network is called mesh DC network so this is about you know uh, two configurations of constant voltage parallel scheme one was parallel empty dc bipolar scheme with radial dc network like this and another was, another is a parallel empty dc bipolar scheme with mesh dc network like this so this is about first type of configuration that is constant voltage parallel scheme now let us discuss constant current series scheme so second is constant current series scheme series scheme now constant current series scheme is like this uh, constant current flows through all the same current flows through all the converter stations that's why it's called constant current scheme series scheme so converters all converters are connected in series like this this is the simplified diagram so I have converter 1, converter 2, converter 3 and converter 4. They are all connected in series. The current ID flows like this. It is flowing in series like this. And one of the poles is grounded like this. So these are converter transformers. Similarly on this side you have converter transformer. The junctions are not uh, you know, grounded this point is grounded so this is the simplified diagram of constant current series scheme but constant current series scheme is not very popular in multi-terminal HVDC systems generally we prefer con parallel constant voltage schemes constant voltage parallel scheme is generally preferred okay now let me very quickly show you the control characteristics I will write here control characteristics of parallel connected systems parallel connected systems I have a multi-terminal HVDC system that's MTDC system but parallel connected okay first scheme so the uh, I have four converting stations there two are operating in rectification mode and two in inversion mode as you already know for example here Converter station 1 operates in rectification mode, 2 also operates in rectification mode. I can write here R, R, R stands for rectifier. Converter stations 3 and 4 operate in inversion modes of operation. Right? So, uh, first of all, I will draw the control characteristics of all the four uh, converting stations separately and then combine uh, uh, this control scheme. So, first of all, I will draw the uh, 
control characteristic of first converter station. So ID versus VD, it is like this. Constant ignition angle control followed by constant current control. Okay. Um, this is for uh, rectifier 1. I will write here. This is the characteristic of rectifier 1. R1. First one. That is this one. This one. And then the rectifier 2 also has similar characteristic. Maybe levels are slightly different. Current levels or voltage levels are different. But characteristic is similar. This is ID. This is VD. So its characteristic is like this. So it is similar to this. Only level is high. Here voltage level is high. Okay. So this has constant ignition angle control characteristic and constant current care characteristic this is the control characteristic of rectifier 2 now after two rectifiers we have two inverters so let me draw the control characteristic of first inverter so this is id versus vd the control characteristic of first inverter will be like this it comprises of constant extinction angle control followed by constant current control you already know it and then i have one more inverter okay this is ID versus VD and its characteristic is also similar, similar to previous one. Constant extinction angle control and constant current control. So these are the, uh, I will write here inverter 1 and this is inverter 2. As you can see we have two rectifier stations. 1, 2 and 2 inverter stations, 1, 2 and their control characteristics are like this, rectifier 1 control characteristic is like this, rectifier 2 similar control characteristic but voltage level different, inverter 1 has this characteristic, control characteristic and inverter 2 has almost same control characteristic and if we, uh, what is the overall control characteristic of uh, your HVDC system, you know multi-terminal HVDC system. The overall characteristic is like this. Let me show you. Overall characteristic is this is for rectifier 1, this is for rectifier 2. Okay, this is the see, this is control characteristic of rectifier 1, control characteristic of re re rectifier 2. This is rectifier 1, this is rectifier 2. And then inverter characteristics are of same level, equal in magnitude, currents and voltages. So, inverter characteristic I can show you like this. That's like this. So this is, so therefore uh, these uh, and this, this and this is combined rectifier characteristics. Combined rectifier characteristics. And what is this? This is combined inverter characteristics. Combined inverter characteristics. And taking all the four characteristics together, it is like this. And this is the operating point where the inverter characteristics, combined inverter characteristics, intersect combined rectifier character. That is the operating point. So this is, I will write here, overall control characteristics. When you combine all, overall control characteristics. Fine. Now let us similarly draw the control characteristics for, uh, this This was for parallel connected systems. Let us draw for series connected systems. So I will now write here, control characteristics, control characteristics of series connected systems. Series connected systems. Okay, let us assume we again have four terminal HVDC system, MTDC system, two rectifiers and two inverters. They are but a series connected configuration is there. So the individual characteristics are like this. First of all, I have a rectifier. This is ID versus VD and rectifier control characteristic is like this. This is constant ignition angle control followed by constant current control. This is for rectifier and here operating current is I1. 
then for second rectifier it's like this id versus vd <coughs> let us suppose it has this type of characteristic again constant ignition angle control and constant current control but its current level is less than that this is i1 and this is i2 okay so these are two rectifiers say r1 and this is rectifier r2 now we have two inverters inverter characteristics will be like this this is again id versus vd and inverter characteristic is like this inverter has less slope so it has constant extinction angle control followed by constant current control and operating current is i3 so this is inverter one okay similarly you have another inverter and its individual char char control characteristic will be like this so it is like this so this is cea and cc this is the operating current is i4 so this is inverter 2 so we have two rectifiers this is rectifier r1 control characteristic here current is i1 this is rectifier r2 characteristic here current is i2 this is inverter 1 characteristic here current is i3 and inverter 2 characteristic i4 if i combine i will get the combined control characteristics after combining all these individual uh, converter station characteristics i get the final control characteristic like this id vd so it will look like this let me first of all draw and then i will explain to you see this is i1 this is i2 this is i3 and this is i4 this is overall characteristics and of course these are combined rectifier characteristics combined rectifier characteristics and these are combined inverter characteristics i will write here combined inverter characteristics so uh, here we have two rectifier uh, two rectifiers see uh, this is rectifier r1 characteristic r2 if i combine them i get this see this operates at i1 this operates at i2 i1 is higher than i2 this is rectifier 1 characteristic and this is rectifier 2 characteristic. similarly i have two inverter characteristics this and this this inverter has current level of i3 this has i4 i4 is less than i3 so this is inverter characteristic i3 and i4 so when I combine all these characters, I get the combined rectifier characteristics like this, combined inverter characteristic like this, and the point of intersection of combined rectifier and combined inverter characteristic is this P. So P is the operating point in this case. And therefore, this is the overall characteristic of series connected system, HVDC, multi-terminal HVDC system. So this completes our discussions on multi-terminal HVDC systems. I have very briefly discussed because it's not possible for us to discuss their operation in, uh, you know, at length. We don't have time and it is beyond the scope of our uh, syllabus. In our syllabus, we are supposed to just give an introductory, uh, just discuss the introductory part of multi-terminal HVDC systems. You should remember that multi-terminal HVDC systems make your classical HVDC systems more flexible because uh, if the length of line is very large for tapping the power in the middle of the line, somewhere in the middle, you can add more converting stations. And that, that makes more flexible control and you can tap power in between so you, your point to point transmission gets converted i mean otherwise two terminal hvdc system is point to point transmission if the length of line is 2000 kilometer so the two converting stations are, are 2000 kilometers from each other so it is point to point transmission so you cannot tap power in between over this 2000 uh, kilometer long transmission line but if you add more converting stations so you can talk uh, where uh, this, the place where you add a converting station, you can tap power there and you can feed that power to the loads, local loads there, maybe bulk loads, industrial loads, etc. 
so uh, you can add one or two or more than two converting stations in the middle depending upon the total length of transmission line and in that case you may get three terminal hvdc system or four terminal hvdc system and that becomes your multi-terminal hvdc system and then we have briefly discussed uh, the configurations of multi-terminal hvdc systems we have parallel connected constant voltage parallel connected hvdc systems and uh, constant current series connected HVDC systems and constant voltage parallel connected HVDC systems were further, uh, you know, uh, classified into um, this uh, radial DC network configuration and mesh DC con uh, network configuration. And we have also drawn the uh, schematic diagram for constant current series configuration. And then we uh, uh, took parallel connected configuration and series connected co configuration separately and we have drawn the control characteristics of rectifiers and inverters separately individually and combined them into a single characteristic giving combined rectifier characteristics combined inverter characteristics and operating point and hence giving overall control characteristics for parallel connected system same is the true for series connected system for series connected system also we have two rectifiers two inverters these are the individual characteristics when i combine them i get combined rectifier characteristic and combined inverter characteristic and this is the operating point and this is the overall characteristic control characteristic of series connected H multi terminal hvdc system so with this we end uh, our discussions on multi terminal hvdc system now in the end, before I wind up uh, my course, uh, I would like to uh, discuss with you HVDC applications in wind power generation. I will write here HVDC in <coughs> wind power generation, wind power generation system, HVDC in wind power generation system. What is the, uh, you know your HVDC, especially HVDC light or HVDC plus or what we call as, call as VSC HVDC. It has tremendous applications in uh, small power and small distance power transmission or DC transmission line, uh, okay, uh, especially in wind power generation. In wind power generation, we don't generate bulk amounts of power and we don't transmit them over very long distances. Small quantities of power are generated and they are, they are to be transmitted over small distances. And uh, therefore, we um, there use HVDC light or HVDC plus. We don't use classical HVDC because for small power levels and small distances, classical HVDC transmission system will become very costly and very bulky. So there we use HVDC light. Let me show you HVDC light application in wind power generation systems. So this is your, for example, wind power generator. WG means wind generator. And this is, these are the turbines, wind turbines. Then this is the AC bus. Gen, this is the generated power converter transformer. This is, for example, let me call this bus 1. This is bus 2. And then you have, actually, you have to transmit this power. Whatever power through wind generator you have generated, you have to transmit that over short distance. And you use... Uh, HVDC light for that. This is the schematic diagram of HVDC light or HVDC plus. Simplified diagram. Okay, this is your converter transformer, this is bus 3 and this is bus 4 and this is your power system, bulk power system, I will write here bulk power system, uh, bulk power system means a grid, whatever power through the wind you are generating, you are taking that and injecting that into the grid. Uh, it's an infinite bus power system or bulk power system, okay? And this is your um, HVDC light, HVDC light. And your HVDC, trans it's a bipolar system, but your uh, HVDC, uh, it may be plus minus 150 kV transmission network, but 
it's not overhead it's underground generally whenever power is generated through windmills land farms wind land farms uh, since distances are small uh, we go for underground power transmission we don't go for overhead power power transmission and in dc power transmission there are no issues like high charging current reactive power etc so we can go for um, you know uh, underground power transmission so this uh, plus and minus this may show underground cables okay so let me tell you that as far as wind power generation is concerned this wind power generation uh, before that i will write you i will write here uh, the voltage levels this transformer say power is generated at 33 kV this transformer steps up the voltage this is the converter transformer to 150 kV and then this is your DC 150 kV power transmission line and then bus 3 at bus 3 you have a step down converter transformer it steps down from 150 kV to 66 kV and then it is connected to the grid now as far as this wind power generation is concerned this wind power generation is environment friendly it has large uh, you know unit capacity it is easy to develop large scale farm 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 due to which it is considered the most promising alternative source of energy okay uh, you know it is not advisable to go for three phase transmission lines uh, i mean we could have just it is a three phase transmission here we could have just um, maybe the transmission length is i will write here transmission length is just 30 kilometers why not to go for ac transmission we could have gone for ac transmission but for such a small length the three phase network ac transmission network is very bulky and it is costly so instead of going for overhead ac transmission we go for underground dc transmission so uh, we cannot go for classical HVDC system because classical HVDC system for low voltages, low power levels and small distances like 30 kilometers will be very costly. So we go for HVDC light and then underground transmission takes place. Okay. Uh, similarly, this is HVDC, uh, HVDC light in wind power generation. Uh, we can use uh, our HVDC light in offshore wind power generation also. That is our next topic of discussion. I will write here properties of offshore wind power generation. Offshore wind power generation. One is land uh, wind power generation, another is offshore uh, wind power generation. Compared to land wind farm, Offshore wind farm has advantages. This, uh, uh, this one is land wind farm. And now I am going to discuss offshore wind farm. Uh, offshore wind farm has certain advantages over land wind, wind farm. So I will write here advantages of offshore wind farm over land wind farm land wind farm what are the various advantages number one it is easy to find suitable sites it is easy to find suitable sites i mean you need sites for a land wind farm you will uh, it's very difficult to find the site you have to go to hilly areas only those areas where uh, ample quantity of wind at sufficient speed is available but as far as shores offshores are concerned at each offshore farm you will have offshore wind farm uh, the the uh, location um, of site suitable site is very easy easy to find suitable sites then it has excellent wind profile offshore wind farm has excellent wind profile the wind profile is excellent it's almost uh, I should say uh, flat what does that mean uh, standard deviation of land uh, wind speed appears dramatically I mean if you see land wind form in case of land wind form wind speed is fluctuating sometimes wind speed is high sometimes wind speed during the uh, daytime is low i mean it has a highly fluctuating uh, wind speed okay um, but uh, as far as offshore wind farm is concerned 
offshore wind farm. Offshore wind farm has considerably flat. I will write here considerably flat wind profile. I mean wind speed during the daytime fluctuates in this case also but the fluctuations are negligibly small. So wind profile is uh, almost flat uh, which is highly desirable. Okay, the second advantage. Third advantage is that offshore wind speed is stronger. Offshore wind speed is stronger than land wind speed land wind speed i mean if you find the difference the difference between the two wind speeds difference of 2.33 meters per second on an average is on an average is found that means um, offshore wind speed is about 2.33 meter per second uh, faster than uh, this land wind speed. So since uh, offshore wind speed is faster than land wind speed by uh, on an average 2.33 meters per second. So it gives more this uh, more output power. So more power can be generated from this. And uh, fourth property or fourth advantage is that um, uh, I can write the energy generated from the wind E is directly proportional to cube of the speed. And why is speed higher? Speed is higher in offshore land, uh, sorry, in offshore wind uh, form than in land wind form. So in case of offshore wind form, since uh, speed is higher than uh, the speed of land wind form. So energy is directly proportional to cube of speed. So that means the energy obtained, which means energy obtained from offshore wind, offshore wind can be possibly 2.4 times that of land wind. I mean, it can produce 2.4, almost 2.5 times higher energy than land wind form okay because the wind speed is higher mm, so um, this is about uh, advantages of offshore wind form over land wind form so therefore it is advisable to go for tapping the wind energy in offshore wind forms and there again we use hudc light or hudc plus let me show you schematic diagram this is our wind generator for example wind turbine And these are the blades of the turbine. This is the wind coming, say, for example, in this direction. The torque developed is Tm. The wind turbine is coupled to the generator. This is our generator. It generates the energy. And then the AC voltage is stepped up. One converter transformer. You may have another converter transformer. Then you have HVDC light converter here. I will show you HVDC light like this. This is so. This is HVDC line transmission circuit or line. Say, for example, it is plus minus one fifty kV. Okay, it is bipolar. <clears throat> then you have step down transformer and then it goes to power system this is your power system okay now uh, here voltage is uh, say uh, the generation voltage is for example 20 kV and it is stepped out first stepped up first to 66 kV then if you have another step up converter transformer it steps up the voltage from 66 kV to 300 kV and then this is your plus minus 150 kV DC transmission line 
plus 150 kV minus 150 kV that means line to line voltage is total 300 kV which is this okay and then step down transformer is here it steps down the voltage from 300 kV to 154 kV typically and then uh, it goes into the grid infinite bus bar grid so this is the simplified system model uh, for offshore wind power generation okay for closed loop control scheme uh, you know you will have excitation control for synchronous generator this may be synchronous generator here synchronous generator for synchronous generator you have excitation static excitation scheme or excitation control you have to sense the uh, generator output voltage terminal voltage and then you have to compare that with refer reference terminal voltage vt star any error is processed in the controller and it then adjusts the field voltage ef field excitation so that it remains constant 20 kv here similarly uh, for wind turbine you have pitch control i am not going into the details those of you who are working on renewable renewable energy systems wind energy systems they must know what is pitch angle control so pitch angle control for pitch angle control you have to sense this voltage give it here uh, this is uh, not voltage but power pg generated power and this is turbine speed so from this it finds the pitch angle and then that pitch angle is beta so this is pitch angle control okay so i will write here this is the simplified system simplified system model for offshore wind power generation offshore wind power generation using hvdc light here also we use hvdc light the length of the transmission line may be a few kilometers maybe 20 to 30 kilometers only and underground cables are used and power may be a few megawatts and transmission line voltage is plus minus 150 kv okay <clears throat> so um the more elaborate scheme is like this it may be like this let me show you it's like this this is synchronous generator this is wind turbine this is converter transformer let me first of all draw then i will explain sg means synchronous generator and this is wind turbine this is one this is two this is converter transformer so on synchronous generator wind turbine this may be number 10 converter transformer and this is ac bus then we have another ac bus here this is again synchronous generator wind turbine generator number one converter transformer then synchronous generator number two converter transformer so on synchronous generator it may be a doubly fed induction generator also but i am showing synchronous generator the generator number 10 and then through converter transformer it is connected to ac bus so this is a 10 megawatt by 30 units that is 300 megawatt okay let me first of all complete then i will explain briefly and then you see this is another synchronous generator wind turbines converter transformer one synchronous generator number two wind turbine converter transformer this is ac bus and synchronous generator number 10 wind turbine converter transformer that's it uh, so this is a 66 kv ac network then you have a step up transformer the step up converter transformer it steps up voltage from 66 to say 300 kv then you have hvdc light this is your hvdc light of course there will be a capacitor filter capacitor
This is a step down transformer which steps down voltage from 300 to 154 kV. And this is your power system. Power system. Okay, so this is DC plus minus 150 kV bipolar DC cable. Bipolar DC cable. And length of this cable is just 30 kilometers. It shows this okay so instead of having one generator you may have a number of generators this is one AC bus you have 10 generators another AC bus in parallel with this 10 more generators another AC bus I mean instead of having one wind turbine or one wind generator you have uh, 10 plus 10 plus 10 30 generators these 30 generators get connected they inject power into this bus these sorry 10 generators. these 10 wind generators they inject power into this bus which is in parallel to this bus and then you have 10 more wind generators which inject power into this bus so this bus this bus this bus each bus uh, in each bus 10 megawatts is generated uh, okay so like uh, this is 10 uh, each generator may be 1 megawatt so 10 generators mean 10 megawatt 10 megawatts plus 10 megawatts plus 10 megawatts 10 um, um, Okay, I'm sorry, uh, each generator may generate 10 megawatts. So how many generators are we using? 10 plus 10 plus 10, 30 generators. 30 multiplied by 10, each generator has a capacity of 10 megawatts. So total generated generation capacity is 300 megawatts. So 100 megawatt here, 100 megawatt here, 100 megawatt here, total 300 megawatts. Now this 300 megawatts, I will write here 300 megawatts has to be transmitted over a short distance just 30 kilometers because we want to inject this 300 megawatts into the grid instead of going for you know three phase AC transmission lines we go for a simple bipolar DC cable plus minus 150 kV bipolar DC cable and since length of cable is very small it's underground cable just 30 kilometers so instead of going for classical HVDC system which is very costly for small distances of th like 30 kilometers we go for HVDC light so here uh, the step up converter transformer it steps up the generation voltage from 66 kV to 300 kV then it is you know converted for, by this converter uh, it uh, may uh, operate as a rectifier it converts it from AC to DC then this becomes your DC power and then DC is converted back into AC by this converter which acts as an inverter okay so uh, what is the voltage this is plus minus 150 kV so voltage here is 300 kV 150 plus 150 is 300 it is to be stepped down to say typically 154 kV and your grid voltage may be 154 kV then it is injected into the grid so this is the application of HVDC light in offshore wind farm so with this uh, uh, today uh, in today's two lectures in the morning lecture and in this afternoon lecture we have discussed uh, HVDC light HVDC plus um, which is also called VSC HVDC voltage source converter based HVDC uh, there we use voltage source converters uh, in place of current source converters thyristor valves are replaced by GTO valves or IGCT valves or generally IGBT valves and switching speed of IGBTs is about 27 times faster than that of thyristor valves. PWM technique is used. Size of filter is very, very small. Cost of filters are very, is very small. The um, uh, overall size of the HVDC converter system is small because of high switching frequency and small size of magnetics. That's why it's called HVDC light. Okay. So, um, and uh, you know, uh, because of PWM operation, the current drawn by converters, both the converters, this converter as well as this converter, they draw almost nearly sinusoidal current from source. So you hardly need any filter, harmonic filter. Even if you need the harmonic filter, the size of those filters at higher switching frequency will be very, very small and they will occupy very, very small space. So that makes the overall HVDC system very light in uh, weight, smaller in size. That's why it's called HVDC light. And another uh, advantage of PWM operation of these converters in uh, HVDC light 
is um, that uh, re uh, the current remains almost in phase with the voltage the current drawn by this converter is almost in phase with the voltage so uh, they give rise to almost unity power factor operation so hardly any reactive power is drawn by these converters so they give unity power factor operation and almost they draw sinusoidal currents so you don't need a uh, huge reactive power compensation apparatus and you don't need large and costly harmonic filters so that makes it hvdc light or hvdc plus smaller in size compact in size and its applications are for uh, you know it, it gives four quadrant operation uh, active and reactive power can be controlled independently of each other and you don't need fast communication channels between various converter stations each converter station can be operated independently so you, you don't need communication channels so these are some of the advantages of hvdc light or hvdc plus or classical hvdc system and another uh, most significant advantage is that a conventional hvdc transmission system is very costly for small power gen, uh, transmission uh, over smaller transmission lengths but hvdc light or hvdc plus is cheaper it is economical even for uh, small power transmission transmission of small amounts of power over small transmission lengths like for example what is the length of transmission here it's only 30 kilometers so it is very economical and we can go for underground power transmission instead of overhead power transmission and we have also studied how this hvdc light can be used in land uh, wind farm for transmission of power and offshore wind farm wind farm and we have also in today's lecture studied uh, multi-terminal HVDC systems, how to convert a point-to-point -point transmission into multi-terminal HVDC transmission for tapping power in the in between the two points. And uh, we have studied the conf various configurations, parallel and series configurations of MTDCs, multi-terminal HVDC systems. And we have also studies studied and learned about how to get the control characteristics of various multi-terminal HVDC systems. So this completes our module number five and I am very pleased, I am extremely pleased to announce to you that our 100%, nearly 100% syllabus of HVDC systems, which was one of the core subjects in your MTech second semester, first year, second semester, uh, you know, scheme, it's over. Let me share with you that uh, in the physical classes, that is face-to-face uh, -face classes, uh, as you already know, we get just 50 minutes class. Our class duration in, in classes in, in the institute is just 55 minutes. We take five minutes for attendance and then class is shortened to just 50 minute duration. And it is not possible, to, it was not over last many years, I have not been able to cover 100% uh, syllabus. But since because of this uh, new technique, online method of, um, you know, using technology, going for uh, shooting, videographing of video lectures and putting them on the YouTube channel and sharing the link with you, uh, there was no restriction of the time. I sometimes uh, extended my lecture to one and a half hours, sometimes quarter to two hours, sometimes one and a quarter hour, sometimes more than one hour. And because uh, I was not uh, having this time constraint, nobody was going to knock the door and uh, I mean no teacher would be there at the door and knock the door and uh, I was not supposed to leave the class. So because of uh, getting ample quantity of time, ample time, I was able to cover of almost 100% of the syllabus and this is really an achievement. And I congratulate you all and I thank all my students, beloved students who have been very cooperative, who have patiently listened to my lectures, watched my lectures, given their feedback, asked various queries, tried to clear their... I, I also, whenever I got a chance, tried to clear your doubts. I tried to reply your queries. You have been very patient um, and uh, especially in Kashmir Valley, in fact, in whole J&K, because of low speed 2G internet, it was very difficult for you to download the lecture. Uh, buffering of video, I'm sure, takes place and, you know, but you have shown really patience. I congratulate you all. But you are in the path of seeking knowledge and those who are in the path of seeking knowledge, uh, they deserve paradise in the uh, hereafter and they deserve great successes. They really deserve great successes. 
I congratulate you again and I thank you all for being very patient with me. You have um, given full support to me. You have watched the lectures. You have tried to study it. You have taken keen interest in this. So, um, um, in our last, uh, in your first semester, I taught you facts, and in this semester, I taught you HUDC system. Maybe I, I will not teach you any subject in your third semester. Uh, and really, I enjoyed teaching you, whether it was physical class in first semester or it was online, you know, this video class in the second semester. I have really enjoyed teaching all of you. I advise you all to go through this subject, revise it, prepare for exams and, you know, study it. And those of you who are interested in uh, doing research in this area, you can, uh, you know, some of you may get a job in ABB or Siemens. And if you get a job in these undertakings, in these companies, with good knowledge of HVDC systems in this subject, you can be directly posted uh, in HVDC wing because ABB and Siemens, they have strong HVDC wings all over the world. And you will really grow there with this background knowledge. So I have, um, as uh, I still remember the day when I went to NAT Srinagar early in the morning, it was strict lockdown. I took the whiteboard and some uh, whatever uh, these uh, pens were there, uh, whiteboard pens. And I started my uh, video lecture shooting with my mobile. It was a humble effort. And Alhamdulillah, I was successful in my endeavors with your prayers, I succeeded and I started shooting video lectures. And with the passage of time, I developed a lot of interest. And with your active support, I was able to complete the syllabus. And uh, while shooting these lectures, I have already told you that I have to take care of many things like I have to take care of in our neighborhood. You can see. Hello, this is myself and this is uh, the room where I, I, I have taken these classes, pen and paper classes. And uh, the room where I have taken classes on uh, this whiteboard, that's another room. We will have a visit to that room also. This is the place in our neighborhood. Uh, this is under construction house and a lot of noise was made by uh, laborers there uh, while, uh, you know, uh, they were using quite often using the tile cutting machine and many other machines. I'm sure in many video lectures you must have heard the background noise of the machine. Anyway, uh, uh, with all the constraints I was able to complete. This is my small library, you can see. This is my library. And, and here I was for last uh, 10 to 15 days I have uh, video shot my lectures here. Yeah, this is, you can say, my study room. <coughs> so, uh, let me show you uh, uh, the other room where I was video shooting my uh, lectures on whiteboard. <coughs> This is the room and this is the whiteboard. This is where I was video shooting my uh, lectures using whiteboard. Okay, this is uh, another uh, bedroom. I had of course converted bedroom into lecture hall. Okay. Uh, so with this, I uh, complete, I announce that the syllabus is 100% complete. And I adv again advise you all to go through these lectures. In case of any doubts, you are free to ask me. I'll be very pleased. I'll be really pleased to uh, clear your doubts. And uh, I wish you all the best for your forthcoming exams and for your future endeavors. Thank you very much.